Are you live? We're live now. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Manor's Designer Diary, episode number 47. Sweaty and late. I'm sure everyone's going to get their notification. <sighs> Here we go. Everyone's coming still. Dylan's still coming. And uh, we, just lost, we just lost our last viewer. Sweet. We're hanging out yeah. by ourselves tonight. You can watch this later. Yep. <sighs> That's cool. Um, we oh, got oh, two. Oh. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Oh. Apparently, apparently, this uh, this video was streamed for seven, but... Not what we had scheduled somehow. Yeah, somehow. Got our wires crossed. I think our wires got crossed, and we posted this video. We had this video um, uh, set up for 8. Josh said 8.45. I thought it was 8.30. We split the difference, <laughs> and we were both off by an hour and a half. Yeah. So for those of you who are from the regular wait to watch this stream, I apologize. Everyone over in mm -hmm. the U.K., it's uh, 1.30 in the morning. It's going to be breakfast washing for you, and uh, I am uh, here now. Ryan says no, I'm still here. Dylan is. Yo, uh, Ryan. Stuck lives here. We got it. Dylan is is on his way because he lost us in translation. And no doubt. Uh, there we go. We got some stuff to show. It is. My watch is dead. What time is it? 8 it's eight thirty five. Eight thirty seven. Eight thirty seven. Well, you know we're not consistent. We're always late. You would know this if you backed our Kickstarters. <laughs> <laughs> Sad but true. That's the true talk. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah. Sorry about that, folks. You know, production's hard. It's been um, it's been a hell of a run today. We are. Uh, what's this, dude? Will Gibson. Sorry, Will. Did we cut into your personal life? <laughs> Do you want to be the next topic of true talk? Follow up with what dude means. <laughs> anyway, here we are. I think that was just a being impressed by the game. Oh, nice. No, no, that was not it at all. He's seen it. What's up, folks? Hello, Meeple's Champ. It's good to see you. Russell Milo, nice. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Evil Dead too. We still get to talk about it, even though they're even though we've missed our deadline. Want to hold that for me? Sure. I'll be right back. Thank God. Now I'm pretty sure that this box, we we designed this this box and we've got our art on the sides and and all of that good stuff. We've got some monsters on the top. Um, I think this is not going to be the box. I'm pretty sure Jasco has gone with a new, a new Necronomicon box wrap. I think so. Because uh, they were sharing that with me and then I updated some of the tokens in the game to use it. And the back of this one is not complete because it's got a placeholder box, but uh, this has since been done, obviously, on the press files we sent in. This was a much earlier prototype that we put together for our gameplay video back when we filmed it. Thanks, R2. Thanks, R2. You know, you're very chatty. But yeah, this is uh, this is the game. So a little bit about, I guess, what we were doing. We've got all the figures. We've got all the tooling for those figures because um, we were the ones that originally connected uh, the manufacturing for that game. That's we had right. nothing to do with the design of the game, but we said, hey, we know a good printer. And that was part of what happened when we were starting Terminator. Right? That's That was part of the discussion, the initial discussion. That's correct. Yeah. Oh. So, so we've I got all the figures and they're all all the tooling is done the molding is done so don't really have to worry about including the cost of all of that manufacturing setup in the new kickstarter correct which is something i don't know if talk much about no nope. and we're going to show you a little bit of the components tonight. one surprise that i found out about last time i talked to jasco is they had the game quoted for both so we we said 40 figures which was six playable characters four bosses uh, nope, six bosses, because Apple heads three pieces. Um, and then 28 deadites, I think, something like that. Uh, Jasco did the numbers and realized that it was like pennies more per game to add the evil characters. Right. So there were six evil evil versions of, um, you know, Ash and Annie and Ed and all those. 
I'm pretty sure those will be in the game as well because we've got the tooling for them and apparently it's not that expensive to, to do them. That might be because they're on the same mold plates. They may have been done together on the same molds. Correct. That's probably why. But good news. You get more figures and it doesn't cost as much. That's right. Yeah. That's how we're able to fit more into the box um, than you guys are getting. So we had a discussion about stretch goals and how, you know, um, how many stretch goals you had on the previous expense. And we're not. And what was worth keeping in the game. Yeah. That was part of it. Because Applehead wasn't originally a core piece. That's but right. we felt it was so important after we talked to a few people that it should be in there. And it's one of the figures that people really liked about the original game. We said, well, we've got it. Let's use it. That's correct. Uh, someone asked me today about the car. Yeah, we've had a lot of people here at Origins ask us questions. Yeah, I've showed, I showed the game to a couple of people now. But I didn't let them take any photos, so we still haven't really shown the internet. And we're not going to reveal, reveal everything. We're just going to show you a couple things. Uh, tomorrow on the Board Game Geek live, live stream is when you're going to get the meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah we're going to show we're gonna show it all up there. And I'm pretty happy with the print quality. This is just a prototype, obviously, but the color is yeah. pretty good on our prototype. So should be should be close. Yeah. Some good stuff in here. Yeah. Got a nice big four-fold board. Show you, that. show you that briefly. Stuff that you can show. Yeah. These are all the cards. <clears throat> but this is a much leaner, meaner game. It plays faster. Less stuff, but it's better stuff. And when Dylan comes, he'll take my seat, and Dylan can uh, show stuff with you because he's got uh, a lot more uh, effort put into this. Well, you show some stuff already? Card backs. Oh, the card bag. We got the portal on there. A couple, got couple of different bosses. That's a blue one. I wasn't sure whose segment uh, it's appropriate, but I was curious what Lynn Vander's role is for a game they designed after it comes out. <laughs> support. I'm not sure what is expected. Uh, so our we, role, we like our games to go do well, so we. So we that's definitely actually verbally promote them. We don't spend marketing dollars to promote them. That's actually a really good question. Um, and I love questions like that. Yeah, it's a, it's actually applicable to all of our segments. It's true, uh, which uh, would make sense. It affects all of us. Here he is. We, this is not his fault. He's not late. We're dumb. We're dumb. We don't read messages. Did you also realize that it was seven o'clock? We scheduled it for it seven. It was scheduled on seven, and then in the in our phone reminder it was eight forty-five. Yeah, no, I went based on the phone reminder. I did not know when this was. Same. Set. So we all suck. Cool. But yeah. uh, we need. Uh, I'll grab another. Find another chair. You, Dylan, you're gonna sit here because you're gonna talk about this game because you are. Yay! We're uh, of it. I'll do the old kneel down in between. All right. I don't know if I can keep that. Oh, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. It's a little well, weird. Also, also you're gonna about. hurt a lot in about five minutes because you're on this fake wood floor in the hotel. <laughs> I have these. This is a quality. Okay, and neither of us have quality. these, so we get the chairs. Got but it. So that also because we've got this uh, microphone here that we all have to hit to yeah. keep it. So okay, so Tristan made his comment. Okay, so the question. So how Tristan's, do you read that? The print's so small. I also have good. I also have eyes. I have these and eyes. I'm uh, still 2020. I'm 2020, and I have trouble reading that. Do you? Yeah. So he, he's basically saying he wasn't sure hey, which segment uh, Sorry, is hi. appropriate. <laughs> um, he wants to know basically. Uh, what Lynn Banner's role is after a game is basically out. Yeah. And what we do to support Aftercare. And I was saying it's actually really important for all of our segments, which is great because that means it's a Lynn Banner Designer Diary segment we talk about. It's true. Um, I also look at the hill. And, and, and it's important for all of us because all of us have some responsibilities post-launch. Oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Oh, we, have, we have a vested interest in the game doing – oh, that's much better. There we go. We have a I vested like interest have in the game doing well, right? And that means that we need to be on hand to answer rules questions. Yep. Sometimes it's uploading files to BGG or prepping like web-friendly versions of rule books. Correct. Or making sell sheets or collateral, although not so much. Our publishers are pretty good about that sort of or stuff. Or spending 14 I mean, hours a day on Kickstarter, answering, talking to comments and emails. Yeah, uh, and for your, those of you yeah. who like, you know, are Sprawl Ops backers and are Sprawl Ops fans, there's a giant fact that I've been maintaining. Like, I keep logging into BGG whenever there's more questions yeah. asked and updating the questions. Yeah. That's part of it, too. And if you're talking Terminator, you'll probably get a very timely response from me about how that game works. Yeah. Now, the biggest one that people keep asking about with that is the grenades. Mm -hmm. they, they think that they're super weak against most enemies. I'm like, no, no, no. It blows up a whole cloud of dudes. And they go, oh, oh, that makes the game a lot different. And I'm, I'm the least professional guy. The, the biggest sprawl ops one is it got missed in the rule book that you start with 20k Nunian. Yeah. I don't think it was your fault. Only though. in the legendary one. 
Was that your fault? Though? Yeah, only in the legendary one because we caught it by the time it went up for the retail. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't think that was your bad. I mean, it was in the rules originally, and then as the rules got edited and got proofed and got edited and got proofed, somewhere along the line it dropped off and people didn't notice. And there's this thing that happens when you're working on games and when you're designing them, uh, which uh, I call feature creep, where you start to remember how certain things work. Like feature creep is usually more like you forget exactly how something worked and you're going by an old version. And then you realize like halfway through the play test that you're like, oh crap, we changed that. Oh man. Need to hmm. figure out how to do I it. I have trouble playing production copies of our games sometimes because I will get small rules wrong. Uh, I yeah. was watching Kyle demo Super Camelot today, and I was like, does that work like that? Show me the book. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Here, <laughs> funny story for the people who are no. here. Um, so last night... We we're just trying to air Good out call. the room a little bit. It's a bit humid when it, no one's here. Well, it's because they were farting, and I walked in and sure. said in the window. Can't smell our own farts. Thanks. <laughs> it's his fault. Anyway, um, so so funny story about last night uh, was we were sitting there and we were playing uh, Gascony. Kind of we were play testing Gascony's, and you had to tell me Josh. To shut up. Josh says, "Let me tell the story." So you have to do it again. So, so Josh is like, Josh is sitting there and he's like, "Oh, I haven't played this in forever," and I start explaining the rules, and he's like. Okay, okay. And then he starts explaining the rules. He's like, oh, you changed that. And then immediately after saying, oh, you changed that, starts to explain to people how it works. And I'm like, Josh, shut up. You're telling them the old version. <laughs> and it happened like, like at first I was like, no, 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 no. And I was trying to be all polite and no, 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 yep. no, that's not how it works. And then by like the second or third time, I was just like, Josh, shut up. I actually just said that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I was pretty far gone. I missed it. I was pretty far gone. Just to ask point. you a question here, would you release updated rule books or is that a challenge? This is challenge. Or is that a challenge? We've as done you, it. Uh, is that a challenge as you have to get published? We, we've done it. Do you have Red Sonya? There's yeah. an updated rule book on board game. We don't actually need to get anything at this point. Once a game is released, um, unless we're adding new things that could break licensing, such as like new artwork or anything of that nature, we don't have to have permission to do it. We can, especially if it's a free thing. If, if it's text and it's just like one little thing. If it's something we're or... uploading that you can download for free, nobody yeah. can do anything about it. So it's like best, and we, it's in our best interest to do updated rule books and stuff like that. As and, uh, and maintain FAQs. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's good. Mm hmm. Alcohol and rules don't mix well. Yes, none of us are drinking right now. <laughs> it's all good. I had a uh, I had a baklava martini with dinner, but that's it. Which we have a cool photo for that. That's really funny. Yeah, I'm sure you'll see that as a title card. Are you guys see the Mexican? Dinner? How was the Mexican? I had a couple of margaritas. It was good. Oh, margaritas. I, really, I just have really, one, one chocolate. Really good margaritas. Yeah. So. Wait, wait. We had the good place. It was pretty good. I expected you to be at the table next to me. That's no. why you start drinking no. after you explain Dylan, the rules. Yes. Dylan just invited us to dinner tonight. Yeah. He Only after to Tommy invited himself. He agreed to, uh, no, no, no. I said, what are you doing for dinner tonight? And no. Said, Mexican. No. I said, oh, can no. we come along? Yes. This is and not then how it was happened. uninvited. This is not how it happened. That's exactly how it happened. There are always two sides to the story. He never it's talked great. to me about it. That's right. He talked to Jame. Yeah. And according to Jame, he said, what are we doing for dinner tonight? So Jame assumed that I had already invited him. I just thought that since we're together, we would be doing team things. Right. In the limited time frame that we have together. And that's why we're here. And then he ditched us for someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible person. Do you guys finish the Evil Dead car story? The Evil Dead car story. Evil Dead car story. Well, is, Will, is Will Gibson speaking gibberish again? He's working and not paying proper attention, according to him. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the gang is here. Hello, John. Hello, John. Okay. You must so, have been telling an Evil Dead car story. I was oh, just talking about the car. That must have it, been It's not in there. It's not in there. That was a really long and riveting story. I can <laughs> see why you didn't finish it. In a nutshell. I got cut off. What do you want? So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Who cut you off? That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working, too. <laughs> I must. All right. So, um... Here's the box, or we don't know if this is the final box as we're talking about. This is a box. On the back, you've got some miniatures and a to-be-pasted graphic. Which, like I said, this has been... Yes. This is an old printing from Bone. Everything we show today, actually, is unofficial because we don't know what is official. Um, well, from so, what's left in this so what, what I've heard from Jasco is that everything is approved, but this is an older printing, so some of this is not 
the latest. So some of this was so the before final, final, final is not the same, yeah. No, the board is final because I printed that last week. Okay. That's the only piece that I updated because I wanted to show final art when we actually present it. Okay, perfect. Um, but I'm pretty sure like there are some small changes to, you know, the details on this character card. And yes, I know I'm showing you the art and not the stream as a character card back. Mm -hmm. But and it's all glare because they're in penny sleeves and no, no, there we go. Anyway, that's a character card back. It's real exciting. Um, but some of the art on there, I think, is not quite final. I don't know if you'd be able to tell on the stream. The hand. <clears throat> yep. That every, every boss gets a reference card mm -hmm. um, because they come up during the game. And we're using the back of the rule book for something else. I want to say player reference. In here? Yeah, it's player reference. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Because we were going to have player reference cards, but we did not. Because we have a player board, which is the reference. Those are the 3D printed minis. Look, I've lost oh, weight. We showed those before. <laughs> yeah. A lot. A lot of weight. <laughs> some tokens you have to show? Let's just let's show some dice. We got some bits and bags. These are cool. But they, yeah, and they're all on here oh. on the player board. And that's old stuff. Those are oh, proxy thing. miniatures for our so This is the. Uh, what is this? Hmm? That's Fire a player reference. board. So you, you've got that in front of you. You put all your stuff on it. Ooh. Those are all the different Ooh. items that you can find when you're exploring the woods. And there are a lot of them. If and, you couldn't tell by yeah. the card and how many there are. This is a barricade token. One of the items you can find lets you board up doors or windows so things can't move through them. So that has the two little gray or black notches. That's where the door goes. And you just put all these barriers over it. One of the items lets you make a caltrop, basically. Spike a, trap. A wooden spike trap, which will kill deadites that wander in the way. We got Page of the Necronomicon. The little tiny the deadites. Little, it tiny. won't kill the bosses when they walk. They won't kill the bosses, no. Uh, there's a bunch of wound tokens. They're small because they fit on your character card. But they're just, you know, blood splat. Uh, I was really wondering why this was at 45 after the hour. No, yeah. no. I figured we not, now you know. Although we would not have had time to have dinner if that were the case. Yeah. Fair. This is a sticker die, obviously, because it's a prototype. These will all be etched, but we've got chainsaws and three of them and a deadite skull. These chainsaws things. are good, the skull is bad. Yeah. And you roll one to three of these. There are only three dice in the game. They're all the same. And if I move slightly, I can be Sadly, on camera. we don't have a flamethrower. No flamethrower. No flamethrower. So, John dreams of uh, taking a flamethrower to Deadites. Mm -hmm. so, Not that you I mean, if you want one. to, you could take the Deadites and build your pro, own pro flamethrower. Tip, pro tip. I, I don't recommend it. There are two blank item tokens watch. on the punch board. There are two blank item tokens on the punch board because there were extra space. So, you're, are, you, are you openly telling them they could make a flamethrower? Yes. I am saying that if you somehow lose an item token, you can make a replacement. That's the important or part. Or you can just make a because flamethrower. It, Don't worry, John's got the rules. He's ready for it. But the important part is it matters how many of each item are in the game. That's very carefully balanced. And if you like lose an Necronomicon page, it's going to mess up Absolutely. your stuff. So because there was punch board space left, I really wanted to have a couple of blank tokens um, just in case you either, either want to add something because it's cool or you want to be able to replace a token that somehow you lost. Tristan asks, uh, does it bother you that it's two years later and it's only just coming out? Which? Uh, I'm super Evil Dead? Yeah, I'm super excited to get mine when it comes to uh, local gaming stores. It doesn't doesn't bother me that it's two years later because if it had you know happened two years ago, I wouldn't have been part of it. <laughs> right? I mean, we weren't part of it originally. Oh, you guys are talking about Friends and Frenemies, though. Oh, Friends and Frenemies? Oh, oh. That's why I was confused. What the heck are you guys talking about? This game isn't two years old. This game is way older than that. Yeah, well, Friends and Frenemies, yeah. I mean, it Evil Dead is like a 2016 game. Friends and Frenemies doesn't, doesn't bother us that it's been two years because we, we, we have been working on it on and off on cycles for a while. We needed to get Buffy up first, and then we needed to... See how that, how that worked in the market and then get the licensing renewed before we could even get to it. Yes, that's right. Jasco renewed the Buffy license because it was pretty obvious it was going to be a hit. They weren't sure if they were going to renew it until they had to do like a third print run. And they were like, oh, we should probably keep this IP because yeah. it's going it's going to be an evergreen. And it and is. Friends and Friends has been doing fairly well here at the con. People mm -hmm. have been excited. 
Uh, we've been getting Amber Benson signing them. Yeah. She loves her card. Uh, she will be on Sunday morning at, sorry, Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, we, we are going to, mm-hmm. no, two? No, it's not a two. What time is it at? I would check my calendar, but I've already learned that's not accurate. Yeah, I'm not, you know, but, but, so I want, it's, I want. It's, it's at noon. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1220. Cool. Thank you. 1220 at the Board Game Geek live feed. Uh, it's going to be Amber Benson and myself and these young fine bucks. On uh, that was weird. And, uh, <laughs> on uh, on the board game geek live feed. I expected that on the sidewalk outside, walking back here, because it's Pride at Origins. Yes, it's fine. I didn't expect it from him. Oh, that's weird. But um, we're gonna we're gonna open up friends in front of you and show you all the stuff. And Amber's gonna be there to show off Tara, which is gonna be great. Um, and that's gonna be twelve twenty on the board game geek live feed. Uh, tomorrow being Saturday at five p.m., we will be showing off this game, Evil Dead Two. And uh, Cowboy Bebop, and uh, we have one other game we're going to show off. Then My, we're showing Bebop again. We could. Uh, no, I think we're saving that for. A, no, you want to keep it on the real. Keep it. Keep the hype real. So you want to show it now? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense now because it's going to be dropping soon, and there's a few copies in the wild already. Um, I think they were super into it. We had the BGG people are big fans of the anime. I heard so. the back of the artifact card on friends and frenemies don't match the color in the core games. Uh, that really depends. Like so. Russell, one of the things that Jasco did with Buffy because it confused people in the original game, when we designed it, there's an item deck and an artifact deck, and the, both are purple in the first printing. The artifact deck just has um, these gold trimmed corners so that you can tell that it's much fancier and the, the nameplate on it, it's not yeah, as dirty. That was the very first print. That was the, that was the first print run. The yeah. seven or eight print runs after that, all of the artifacts are red. So there and, are 10,000 copies of Buffy with purple artifacts. Yeah. And 90,000 or 8,000 right. copies that's, of Buffy with that's red right. artifacts. So when they printed Friends and Frenemies, they put only the red artifact in, I believe. Although I'm pretty sure there exists. I think we gave them a print file for a purple artifact as well. Yeah. We had two copies of it so that you could have matched them. But I guess they decided just not to print the purple one. Because it wasn't sense. in my copy. So you got I have a first edition Buffy, yeah. and it doesn't match mine either. I wonder if they'll do some, some upgrade print kits, probably. Why don't we put it in allies? As mucho smarto. <laughs> yeah. We, have, we haven't talked too much about allies, yeah, actually. Yeah, we should talk a bit about it. Because we, the, the more we do in the Buffyverse, we keep finding things we want to add to the game. Because the game is light enough and a big enough design space. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do with it. Uh, I know it's not the end of the world, Russell, but like... Really? Come on. Yeah, we still have to figure it out. We still annoyed a bunch of people, you and me included. (laughs) That's my favorite piece of art we had done. Look at that, eh? There's some Stephen Belshaw original right there. Yeah. Do we know the Kickstarter launch date? No. We don't know. We're at the we're at the mercy of Kickstarter. Huh? No. He's got a bunch of heads on the side. He does. Those are from the film. That's actually my favorite card back. The corruption card? Yeah, the corruption card back because we use the art again, but in a blood splatter. It's funny because I think I keep thinking, I'm like, you guys have seen this all before. And then I realize none of it. No, you haven't seen the. Uh, some the, some of it's. Uh, you haven't seen the uh, playthrough video yet because it's not live. Yeah. Russell actually has a good idea if you have the artifact decks that don't match. It said draw from the bottom. That works too. Yeah, if there's guys, lots of ways around it. Yeah. If you guys are uh, if you guys are all in uh, and loving the Evil Dead two spoilers we're giving you, you know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. There Come you on, go. Push the button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Justin has another point here. He says when you guys are creating new heroes for F and F, friends and frenemies. Oh, there we go. Arvin Angels. Do you feel obligated to create new mechanics? Well, they can't be the same. No. But we had uh, new mechanics as the initiative basis to interact well, with. Well, that's different than just creating new heroes. They still all do the same stuff, and there's a lot of design space in the core game of Buffy that we didn't touch. So, um, in Angel, for example, because those characters Hi, are cross compatible, um, Cordelia does things to mess with the event deck. She has visions of the future and can edit what events you're going to get or can help you cheat your, your event checks. Mm-hmm. Um, and the promo we did for Buffy it actually does a version of that. They are different, but the kind of this take on the same thing. In some ways, I think the Angel one is stronger, A, because Angel's a more difficult game and you need 
the firepower, frankly. Yeah. But B, at that point, Cordelia also actually has the visions. So the two versions of her are different. Mm -hmm. I think you can play with both because the Buffy promo one we did will end up being more flexible, but the Angel one is more powerful. Coming back to the core question, though, about um, whether or not adding new mechanics or new characters, usually it's not because of the character that makes us do it. Usually it's when we're talking about doing an expansion or something like that. Like mm -hmm. when it was with friends and frenemies, with everything that, that um, was done with the soldiers that I'm blanking on the name on the initiative. The initiative base, saying. yeah. Yeah. So having them set up, that's that's a new core mechanic because I, when we make an expansion, we don't want it to just be more cards, more of the same. Because that's not as interesting for us. That's also not going to be as interesting for you. I mean, yeah, it changes the random number generator and it'll change some art and also make things potentially uh, a little more interesting with that. But if we can pull in a whole new mechanic and a whole new thing to introduce you to, that's mm -hmm. much more interesting to create and to play. <laughs> Josh Hamby's teasing Mr. Jeeves. He's like, I'm assuming I've missed a lot. And he's like, yes, they launched the Kickstarter. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> he's probably like, where? He's, I bet you Mr. Jeeves is on Kickstarter right now looking for it. Mm -hmm. We would have posted links, Jeeves. Josh is yeah. just being mean. But there was a comment uh, from Tristan about um, Oz's human wolf form. Yes. Oz is kind of a weird case because he has that, that, that dual mode and we really wanted to to make him different than the yeah. other characters because he switches back and forth. Yeah. Right. He, but he's he's kind of the only weird one. And the werewolf form means he gets an extra card that explains everything it does because the Buffy character cards actually don't afford us a lot of space to explain. And someone noticed in our Angel Proto earlier I didn't even catch this when I printed it because I was in a, frankly, a bit of a rush to prep for Origins. But um, Gun's ability is truncated because it doesn't fit on the little tiny box on the character. Yeah, card. it actually wrote right off to the corner. Yeah, it just I, bled when, right when off. You notice that you were like, oh, jeez. Yeah, it's it's because Gun has a passive and a special, and the special is wordy. Just like when you finally notice that your name is spelled wrong on the box. Oh yes, yeah. everybody, remember oh, the last man. feed? We were hoping he'd show up for the end of the feed because his name was spelled incorrectly. On the Sprawl Ops box, but we had found out that that dedication to that and, crank and that, that that was months that was of good. that was months of waiting on that return yeah. from them. And if Dak was here, he we could summon them again because uh, Dak knew about it and he had the sticker and he, he was sworn to secrecy. The box had a sticker on it that had his name spelled incorrectly, and but but only him, his personal copy. They gave correct, him, yeah, correct. Those jerks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, and the best part about this is that they gave me the box and I was in a rush running from place to place. So they expected me to see it and it to be a joke and then they were going to pull off the sticker. And I was like, okay, awesome, yay, blah, blah, blah. And I took the box and I left. Mm -hmm. And they were all just when like, I well, got okay. home was when I pulled it out and I was like... And we got a message. Oh, crap. And then you saw me on the True Talk being like, what the fuck? I'm freaking out. I was yeah. actually the old designer. Yeah. And so, and then I sent a message and I was, I was like, so Randall, I'm going to post pictures of this on social media, da, 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 talk about it. I'm like, do you want me to call out that my name is misspelled or do you want me to just let people notice? I can't believe they, they, they carried it on and let it. Well, go. yeah, they sent me texts of how pissed off Lauren was. Lauren was asking how I didn't catch it. Lauren's like the CEO and of Catalyst. I was, I was like, yeah. well, you know, it was supposed to be a surprise. So it was never sent to me for proof. And he's just like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, he's just playing it up. I'll... And then I got a text from Randall, who was like, oh, my gosh, what did you say to Lauren? He's pissed. He's kicking things. So, Lauren, like, so Randall's the straight shooter. So if Randall does it, the legitimacy of the prank becomes real. You're like, oh, yeah. it mustn't be a prank then because Randall's like – Actually yeah. talking about this. Yeah, man. no, if it if they had tried to pull it off in front of me, there's no way Randall could have done it. Randall no. would not no. have been able not, to. Poker to face sell. isn't good enough. Yeah, he's got to get out of there. Yeah, he's... So, and then it was now six weeks later when they finally <laughs> showed me <laughs> the, the actual right word. box. And I was just like, oh my God. And everybody was laughing. And somebody got it on video. I did. I should. I'm gonna upload it. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube as a one-off prank video. You guys can watch. It's yeah. quite cool. Um, I want. The, they got me good. I want I the three of us to answer Tristan's question individually. Yes. So, is there a, a rule, mechanic, character, or item that you are most proud of that you have created? I know what mine is, but I think we should answer individually because that'll be cool. A rule. One. One like cool thing that you're just like. Mm. Okay. The question is. Can, can we, we talk about unrevealed games? Yeah, that's the question. Ah. Uh, if you, you can, if you can, can without revealing can what the game is, you mask the mechanics or the the, the, the skin. 
and then say it because if that's the case, I then can. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then, what, do you want to, right, go or so, do you want to go or do you want to like wait? No, I, no, no, I'll go first. I think I know what you're gonna say, but, but I'm curious. I think to hear you know it. what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. So the the thing that uh, uh, one of the things that I absolutely think is one of the best things that we've come up with is a way to determine turn order in a tactical combat game. Uh, and what we yeah, do that's is what I thought you were gonna say. we have, without going into too many details, but we have a way of tracking it so that the bigger actions you do, it's the longer before you get to take another turn. Oh, I know what you're talking about And now. so you can do <laughs> small actions and go multiple times in a row, or you can do this big epic action, but then you know you're going to have to wait for all the monsters to go before you get a chance to go again. Mm -hmm. And it does and, a and lot juggling, of And the... juggling, uh, because you can't, there aren't very many ways to voluntarily waste those actions to, to manipulate the turn order. You kind of have to balance what all the characters need to do to work together with what those time costs are going to be. Right, because the game also has a lot of synergy involved where it's like, I can do stuff to help Josh. Yeah, you buff me, but so then you're going to take longer to follow up with something. But then you're trying to juggle all of that. Yeah. So that would probably be one that... And one, is, that and one of, pretty damn cool mechanic. Yeah, and one of the things that it's, changes is how many, how much time you can spend as a function of like your character or... And that it's one that every publisher we've shown it to has, has been, been like... Oh my god, I want this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was. And they're gonna get it. Oh. Timing sounds a bit like Dragon and Flag. Dragon and Flag is a programmed action game. This is different. See you, Josh. That's cool. Uh, what's yours, Tom? Well, it's weird because I think mine is actually a modification to Pathfinder and Legacy. Of <laughs> sure. It's weird. I think it's the Ethereum mechanic, the Ethereum Night mechanic, the ability to counter and absorb spells um, in a role-playing game scenario where it quantifies the actual spell level plus character spell level abilities, uh, magical things such as dragon's blood and stuff like that, and use the sword as a battery to absorb and destroy magic um, in a way that uh, creates an entropy into the world and, and like removes magic from it entirely. And it's an RPG thing, it's not really a mechanic, but it, it is to... It's a cool concept yeah. that manifests in a lot Kyle, of ways in the setting. Kyle took it and made it understandable in in uh, <laughs> translated in, in it fifth for ed, you. but in Pathfinder where we were able to quantify using this using the, the Ethereum sword, mm -hmm. and you'll see it when you get to when you get to Legacy Mana books and stuff like that how it works. But the concept behind it is one of my favorites. But it's more conceptual. So give me give me sure. a because I got to think of like there's a few board game mechanics that I I don't know if they're completely original. Or not, because I mean, wasn't, I don't, wasn't context, asked... context, context is really important for those, because sometimes even old mechanics can be given innovative new life. Well, but it wasn't just a mechanic. Like, I picked a mechanic. It the could question be an item, was character. a rule, mechanic, character, or item that you are proud of. Okay. King Arthur's ability was, in Albion's legacy. I knew you were going to answer that. King Arthur's ability Who in Albion's legacy. Who always dies in Albion's legacy? It does because of his ability. So yeah, Arthur the King designed his to subjects. die. He's designed to die. My favorite, <laughs> my, my, my most proud ability Are you scared? is that I'm never scared. Who's scared? Are you scared? Never scared. Never, never scared. scared. Never scared. Uh, it's for you, Christian. Uh, the <laughs> uh, the ability is if you play uh, Albion's Legacy, mm -hmm. Arthur has the ability to take a wound for another character, no matter where they are in Albion or in uh, Camelot or in the world. And for taking that wound, you gain a destiny token back, and destiny is what you use to help mitigate your rerolls and stuff like that. Yeah. So Arthur, it makes has, him better, but it also makes him weaker. It makes him weaker because he's taking damage for everybody. He's kind of tanking. Yeah. But in Albion's, there's no lengthy tanking. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So it's like you, you take you don't have more life than everyone you else. You tank You're once still really and soft. then go and try and take on like a level one. You're just getting rocked. And yeah. so that's why Arthur dies a lot because you end up tanking for other people's successes. And I just find that mechanic so fitting for Arthur himself. Uh, yeah. Albion's Legacy, you're all level one mages trying to tank. Oh, I have a, yeah. I have a second one, but you go. I, my second one, I think, is more attained to Okay, you. so mine, there's a couple of things in Cowboy Bebop I'm very proud of, but I think the, the, the one that I am most proud of is actually the mm -hmm. T-1000 in Terminator Genesis. Oh, he's good. Yeah, that's really good. So the whole game, everything in that game, with a couple of exceptions for like mini bosses are these like one hit and dead or obliterated there's hordes of terminators that you're just you're, you got the, all these crazy guns and you're just mowing them down like they're it's not like the the you know terminator one where he's unstoppable and you're putting shots into him with, with like conventional weapons no you're fully loaded and ready for battle but the t1000 cannot be killed just period you can't kill it 
what you can do is reduce what it does on its turn. Mm -hmm. So it has a little health track that maxes out at missed turn, essentially. You shoot it so hard it falls over and has to Much like back up and reassemble. Right? Like, and so, and, and because, of, because of the turn order in that game, Terminator is, uh, you pick a player to take a turn, they roll their dice, they do their actions, and then their color of enemy activates. So that you're always juggling, okay, well, if I take a turn, those guys respond. But if I take a turn, or if you take mm -hmm. a turn, those guys respond. The T-1000 is a boss, and it activates after every player. So you end up with this upkeep step where you kind of have to decide who is, who is pummeling the T-1000 to keep it away from you. Because it's by default, it runs into you, shoots you, and stabs you. You take an automatic wound plus whatever it shoots you for. And when you, when you pile firepower into it, if you get enough hits in one roll, you push it back. And if you get a cumulative amount of damage, it either moves slower rolls fewer attack dice, or misses its turn because it's fallen down and has to stand up. So the, the funny thing about this boss is that no one really sees it coming when they play the campaign because it doesn't really make an appearance in the future portion of Terminator Genesis in the film. And because we're telling a prequel story to the game, with the first two missions are like, the first one's like, here's your intro, here's how the waypoints work. Second one's like, here's a gauntlet to run, and now you've got to maintain unit cohesion. The third one is, Here's a prison with a bunch of cells that are spread out in different directions. One of them is the T-1000. Spoilers. Uh -huh. and, and it just absolutely derails players the first time they encounter it because they're used to the other scenarios where you don't have to work so tightly as a team to keep one thing at bay. Yeah. And they just die. It just butchers them. Yeah, Russell Mallow goes, my favorite damn thing about Terminator. <laughs> That's right. Right? Exactly. And if you have Fall of Skynet, we did a variant Terminator. It's a second card that you can use instead of the stack card, and it works a little differently. Mm -hmm. The variant one is a shooting Terminator. That's C-1000, right. which is cool. I will say that there's there's one other thing that I can think of that we haven't found a home for yet and still need some cleaning up, but uh, it's a game that I actually developed before I joined, mm -hmm. um, which is I came up with a heavy strategy game where every house has a different victory condition. Oh, yes. And yet they're balanced. So right. it makes for very mutable relationships because sometimes it's I could okay trade you that, but that's your else. win con. Right. Because you're yeah. not all striving for the same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah so, that's cool. And the last one for me is actually Sweet's ability in Buffy. <laughs> I, it's I, it's for yeah. me, it's, it's, I'm the most proud of it because the it, idea... It's, it's it, weird to have that in that game, but it couldn't be any other way. Gentleman and Sweet are two mechanics that's like, we need to pull out of the meta just a little bit further. Yeah. And what it is, if you play Buffy, so you're defeating Monsters of the Week to try and reveal the plots. It's, to find it's, the big it's a fairly strategic, like, co-op, manage the board kind Pandemic of thing. Pandemic meets Arkham Horror kind of thing. Yeah. And the Monster of the Week, when Sweet pops up, the card says... All the players have to communicate through song. They have to sing to each other, and if they don't, they take wounds. So it's up to the players to police this. You don't actually have to do it, but I mean, it's I up know to people the... that take that card and the gentleman out of the box. They, they don't, play with they don't, don't want them. See, the I would treat that card just like the gentleman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it's I actually really funny because I, a quick story to that. I went to Gen. So last year at Gen Con, people were playing Buffy, and it just so happened that they were they were skilled in sign language. So they all got the oh. gentleman, and they were quiet, and they were all signing to each other. And I walked up and I'm like, hello. Or I was like, yeah, hello. Power spelling. Yeah. Right? Power spelling. It's like, I, I I am Tommy. Nice to meet you. And they're like, okay. And I was like, oh, you can speak. I thought I thought they were a group of, of hearing impaired players. And they're like, no, we just got the gentleman. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Sorry. <laughs> I walked away. It's like, it's like, whoops, my this bad. This also happened in a sign language. Which, so is, which is amazing. That's fantastic. Actually, the best part about that episode is that – for all the things that happen in Sunnydale, we don't see any people who are doing sign language. Hmm, that's true. Right? And that was always something. Heather always mentions that when we watch that episode because she's just like, so those people are fine? It's like Bird Box. Mm -hmm. the, the people who are immune are the people who are blind. Yeah. So yeah. so Rick asks if we'll have a switch between human and deadite and uh, evil, an army, uh, uh, evil Dead 2. And Tristan asks... Uh, those are the first two – or Tristan, said, Tristan says, those are the first two monsters of the week we had, <laughs> right? So uh, we should run a bit on Evil Dead 2's mechanics. See these? These tell you what team you're on. You got human and deadite. If you get human – These are human. these are secret roles. Why don't you talk about them, Dylan? Because this, really, this is really where this game went from being, okay, cool, to being, this feels amazing. 
So the secret rules work such that if you have, uh, it's if if you've ever played Battlestar Galactica at its core level, it works like that, where it doesn't matter how many human cards you have. If you have at least one Deadite card, you're a Deadite. Right. And so you could collect five corruption cards. And if only one of them is Deadite, you're still a Deadite. If yeah. like three of them are deadites, it's not like you're an extra deadite. Well, you're, you're just really deadite. You're <laughs> really committed to being corrupt, I believe, is what the rule book says. Yes, <laughs> it actually does. And actually, there's a way that you can. Uh, so, uh, with the corruption cards, what we wanted to do is we wanted to symbolize the fact that working with the Necronomicon and fighting deadites, you know, there's this whole corruption and that is in the lore that people wind up getting turned into deadites. But kind of spontaneously sometimes. Sometimes they're able to hide it, right? Right. Not necessarily in Evil Dead 2, but the example you used that sold me on it was the um, the witch in Army of Darkness. Yes. Because one moment she's perfectly happy inside the castle and the second moment she's leaping across the room onto Ash. And exactly. And so it was like, okay, well, we're going to set it up so that you know, it's not an obvious thing, so it's going to be a hidden role mechanic. But yeah. what we didn't want to do was we didn't want it to be, okay, deal out all the cards. Oh, one person's a deadite. We're like, that's not interesting. That's not exciting. Even Ash was a deadite. You're right. So what we changed it to was we have corruption cards. And when you do certain things, which can result in you taking evil actions. Like using the Necronomicon like or failing. Getting a, bit by a deadite. Getting bit by a deadite. Or, and it, this is important, this is why I say taking evil actions, yeah. even attacking another player yes. can be seen as a form of corruption. Whenever yeah. you do this, you draw a corruption card. And if you get too many corruption, or sorry, if you get a deadite card, you become a deadite. When you are a deadite, your goal changes. So, at the beginning of the game, your assumption, and I'll get back to why it's an assumption, is that everyone's human, okay? And you're all working to close, Statistically, everyone close the rift. Statistically. But oh, you when you become a deadite, your goal is now to open the portal. And it becomes a race, and there are actually three ways the game can end. One way is the humans lose and the deadites win. One way is the deadites lose and the humans win. Or no one wins. There is actually an end condition where nobody I think wins. it's pretty rare, though. It's it very difficult very to get. It's not, it's not easy to get because there are you, multiple you have conditions. To, I think you have to actively stall to get that one, don't you? You yeah. have to kind of reach a stalemate, and then the game just... just yeah. It's basically our time cap, Yeah. Uh, where if the game takes too many turns and no one has actually worked at closing the rift or, or opening the rift, then the game's just going to stall out and... Everybody loses. So Mark asks if you can corrupt another player. It's like, you can't? Well, no, you um, let, let me get to this can. in a second. Can't so I also want to say that when you are a Deadite, you can choose to reveal yourself, and then the rules of the game change for you. Yes. Uh, you, so you, you, you can, can choose the appropriate moment to go, oh, no, I'm on the other team. Like, you yes. get killed. Like when you're about to get swarmed by Deadites and killed, uh, you reveal we, we, def we had a game where... Um, it looked like I, I was I was the only deadite in the team. This was one of our early tests. Yeah. And it looked like things were going to go well. I was way behind on getting enough pages to get the track. But I was standing in front of the portal and I had the chainsaw. So they came to deliver the pages. And I was like, no, I I'm can't stop all of you. But I can become a deadite and just <laughs> chainsaw you. You're dead. <laughs> so, uh, so you have that option. And one of the things that we added, which makes it really interesting, I think, is that at the beginning of the game, everyone gets a corruption card and you're not allowed to look at it. Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether or not you're a human or a deadite. Until... Until you gain another corruption card. Right. Yeah. Once you gain a second corruption card or once you pick up a piece of the Necronomicon, yeah. once you do either one of those things, you can then look at your corruption card and see what you are. But until then, you don't even know Mm -hmm. If you're a human or so, you can't you can't mess it up and like screw up your early telegraphing until yeah. the game is a little bit along the way. So there's some now, real quick to answer the question: uh, If you are a deadite and you've revealed yourself as a deadite, you can attack someone, and if you're successful, so let's say that the three of us are playing and mm -hmm. I'm a revealed deadite and I attack Tommy, I can slide Tommy one of if I win, I can slide him one of my corruption cards. <laughs> but nobody else knows. Nobody what it is. except him and I are going to know whether it's human or dead eye, and it doesn't matter what he says. Josh is going to make his, his, his so own that decision. Is the way you go back, and that is the way. Well, you can't go back. We do. We. But if, slide, but, if I, but if I have a dead eye card and I slide you my dead eye card, we keep my human card. I'm no longer dead eye. 
No, because the way we, we change it is, is that we we specifically didn't have you able to go back from being a deadite because then you get the hot potato thing of like, oh, I don't want to lose. Oh, I don't want to lose. I don't oh, yeah, lose. yeah, yeah. So, it messes up your motivation. To answer the question be, there, yes, it's a big, we don't you can't come back from being a deadite right. because of of game mechanic smoothness and proper play. But, but you can can't turn someone else into a yeah. deadite or even make people think. You've turned some else. Yeah, which is and crazy. there are ways to prevent taking virtue checks, which is how you decide if you get corruption from a lot of effects in the yeah. game. Like the the pendant, the necklace. If you've got that item, you can prevent a virtue check straight up. So if you're about to take a pile of corruption from some event or getting mobbed by deadites, you're just like, no, I'm still going to be good. Or but, but if you when... still haven't drawn an extra corruption or you still haven't found a page, you could still be a deadite and not know it because you have that first card from yep. the beginning. It's borderline a party game. It is. It is. It feels like, like a party it's, it's game. It's a party with... game that's a board game at the same time. So it's not like a party game like Werewolf or or mm -hmm. uh, or like What Do You Meme or something. But it's like, you know, it's it's actually a it's it's a lot of fun. People are going to be ripping and roaring at this one for a while. It is a very vocal game. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's, people at the table are very. Vocal. There's a lot of accusations yeah. about why did you leave that item there or. That seems like a dumb thing to take when there are three tokens there. Is that really the best thing, or are you screwing with us? Yeah, exactly. Um, because you're also maintaining the hidden information of like a bunch of different piles of items around the board. It sounds right? like Evil Dead, right? It feels like an Evil Dead scenario. Like it's it's pretty. We dramatic. really wanted to capture the doubting of each other, like yes. when things get crazy yes. and that whole like, scene where I they bust into the cabin and they you. assume that uh, Ash is a murderer, and they pin him down and they chain him to the cellar door, and then it's like, oh. Oh no, <laughs> that was a bad idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so then uh, Tristan says, his designers, do you ever feel, do you ever get accused for stealing a mechanic? Chris, they're brand the new. Do you feel that you cannot put something in a game because people might think that? Or is everything free game? I mean, everything is, everything in board gaming now is, there you go, the hand. Talk to the hand. Yeah, it's there. It's in the game. I mean, everything, like, it all depends on how you define mechanic, right? How many deck builders are out there? Are you saying that they stole how deck building works? Yeah, I mean, we all know that Carrie from Twilight Creations stole Betrayal of the House of Han Hill. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the other way around. <laughs> Carrie had a tile flipping mechanic very similar to Betrayal before Betrayal came out. And then when Betrayal yeah. came out, it's, a, it's the it's same hard, mechanic. It's hard not different. to have the cross-pollinization yeah. of the industry. Yeah, Albin's Legacy has a tile flipping mechanic that was born out of inspiration from... Yeah. Betrayal, but it's so, nothing the same. I mean, well, you, you could argue that every deck builder is Dominion yeah. that has stolen that mechanic from Dominion, but so many, it's every, gone every in so many that different ways. involves tapping is magic. Well, what if, well, yeah, what if, right? Well, that's not, we know that's not true. For a while, though, magic did patent or did, sorry, uh, copyright tap. the use of the word tap, but Correct. they couldn't copy the use of the word turning your card sideways. They couldn't, co the they card, couldn't so. copyright the mechanic, but they could copy the word, write the word tap. Yeah. You're actually still, you're Exhaust, not supposed commit. to describe it as tapping a card. But you can still exhaust, commit, yeah. turn exhaust, the card commit, sideways. Turn. But you technically, legally, you still can't say the word tap. Right, and that's just the way copyright law works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was also... Well, so real quick, though, specifically to your question, um, with uh, I liken it to writing, okay? There's a big thing a lot where a lot of new writers are like, oh, I don't want to give you my book and have you read it without a contract or an NDA signed because I'm worried you're going to steal it, right? The reality is, is that stealing the actual full game or the actual full book is going to get you screwed yeah, because no it's very easy to be like, I have all of these files. It's very clear. I made this for them yeah. to take all of the mechanics and all of the ideas and make their own. It is not worth the effort that it takes rather for them, for them to just yeah. write you a check and say, okay, we'll buy it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's the reality is that there is this fear of, I shouldn't show things. People are going to steal it. The reality is, is, is that stealing it is more work than just buying it from you. Yeah. And even when uh, you've got designers working on things in parallel, even for us, our games would not be as good as they are without the number and quality of playtesters we have that look at our games. And yes, we NDA them anyway, but that's because of sensitivities on the licensing end. Yeah. NDA is normally a formality but, anyhow. Right. And... And even if we were not working on a licensed property, if we have an original property that we think is going to be really hot, I don't care really about that being NDA'd because I still want them to play it. I still want all of their input on the game. The way I look more at NDAs is the whole, if, you know, like we're doing the, the Naruto game. Yeah. And if the company that we're doing it with 
has a release schedule and plan and doesn't want to announce it yes. until a specific time because yes. of their marketing plan. Yeah, that's, where that's where NDAs matter. And I think Russell's also right here when he says, I'm a firm believer that at the end of the day, there is no 100% original thought or idea. No, everything's a remix. Yes. An iteration. Everything's a or, remix. Yeah. yeah. A remix is just, a, it's just two words that have been mixed together. There you go. Remix. Easy. Good job. You good writer. It's not even an original word. <laughs> you good writer. Go finish the novel. Oh, <laughs> right? We have, to, we have to chain him to a desk. That's right. So, yeah, so some great questions, Tristan, and everyone else. That's been, it's been a long yeah. time. Do you have any more questions and stuff for us while we're here? Do you want to show a little sample of the board? Maybe like a splash? I want to, I want to save the, the game board itself for the stream. Yeah, there's the board because, right there, guys. Because this there's is this is the fourfold board. It's pretty big. That's the board. It's an illustration of the cabin. The whole game is the show, cabin. Show the fold. Hmm? Oh yeah, I can show one. Let's do that. No, no, no. no. I mean, I know, just like. Hmm? Oh yeah, oh. I can show you one. Oh, you, they're seeing just a little bit of it. Yeah. All right, we can do Here, that. Here, Josh, an obvious distraction. Yeah, there you go. So I think we've seen some of this before. This is the. It kitchen. looks so good, guys. This is the kitchen and bathroom portion of the cabin. No, it's still too much. Don't give them that still, much. Still too much. They don't deserve that much. Oh, okay. Well, you guys can you guys can rip this video and stick it. In I was Photoshop like, now they're gonna later. go back and just pause it screen. Yeah, yeah. and put it in Photoshop and Will's, skew it. Will's it taking out. photos of it. He's drawing it out right now. Will <laughs> seen it. Will seen it. That's first joke. But if you think that little slice of board looks super sexy, thumbs up, subscribe. I mean, All that it's it's not there. yellow. Let's go with that. I also don't know if you heard, but somebody meticulously went through the movie and put in all of the furniture. For uh, there's there's a box of shotgun shells on a shelf in the hallway that's on that map illustration. Yeah, it's I think in two frames of the film. He so, overdid it in a great way. Yeah, a lot of fans. We now have board game blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our world. Chris has got board game blue balls. Look how much blue we have. We're dying here. Why yeah. do you think we wear blue? <laughs> so Ryan's asking if we, if we can show a mini next to an Army of Darkness mini. Uh, I don't think we have Army of Darkness here. I think it's at the... You can show some of the Evil Dead movies, though, down in the box. We down. can. They're just like keep in mind that these are 3D prints that are not super high quality, kind of and they're also not in scale. Some of them are different sizes. So some of the smaller Apple, ones are... The tree. The, tree. The, best the, the tree is probably the coolest one. It's got the most attitude. And then if not, we can probably show... Yeah. So this guy, I think, is smaller than he will end up being. Um, Henry, oh, Henry oh, has much flash. Exactly. And I want to point out that no, that's, that's uh, we're not really changing anything about how the figures were originally designed because we have all the tooling. So that would require us to pay for new injection molds, and that's not a thing that we want to do because that's wasted work and money. There's the hand. Oh, I was I was helping with it. There we go. Yeah, they've got color contrast. If we just cover Tom's face. Fine. Yeah. I'll just take there the nose behind it, The hand is a great model. It, it's one of the, the, I think the hand and the tree are probably my two favorite sculpts. We don't have a 3D print of uh, Applehead. We got to ask, but, but he's, uh, he's missing an arm, so we'll hold him by the missing arm. Yeah. I'm not, is that the one that we're using? I think yeah, we might actually. what he's pointing with. He's missing a hand. Cause we, cause it's just I really, actually, it's I'm actually really not sure if that figure is in the game. I think that one might remain an exclusive promo. This is. This is the ash I think we're using. It's the the heroic pose ash. Yeah. You just like they're pretty good. I'm gonna get yeah. Yeah, Ash lost his other hand on that mini, so he's did he? No, he one hand. One, one here. I mean, oh, that one. Yeah. They were saying it's the wrong hand he's missing. He's yeah. He's armless. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, this guy's gonna make an appearance in force. This uh, this deadite. He's our generic goon with his ball cap. Yeah. This is I think this is a cool figure. It's the most dynamic of all of them, which is why we wanted to use it. And we're still going to use all the evil versions of the characters because Yeah, we'll have some of these to um, show tomorrow too. Yeah, do we have a Henrietta? We have a tiny Henrietta. There's lots of flash on her still. So is it? Oh uh, yeah, we didn't clean this up very well. The backside's real real bad. You can kind of get a sense of the the chest maybe. But yeah. Groovy. Some bits. It, that's a cool model too actually. We've got a clear one that is very kind of grimy because we did a few different test prints. This is uh, this is Nathan, right? At yeah. Loomis. This is uh, one of the other businesses. He's a, a 3D printing hobbyist. He's been making all kinds of stuff for the, the Waffle Cafe. Mm -hmm. And he just did some of these for us. Yeah, so you got your sneak preview of some of the components. You got your 
sneak preview of the discussion of the game. Um, the only thing we don't have is a date. Yep. Still waiting. If we had one, we would give it to you. We're still waiting. Trust me. The moment we get a date, there will be a live stream telling you about it uh, so we can get it built up. And then um, you need to tell all the people. Yes, and then you need to spread the word. Uh, it's been fun watching you teach people scroll ups today. That's been fun. Oh, my gosh. So um, – so uh, Sprawl Ups is actually my, my second game, but my first game uh, was was very, very small. It's called Henchman. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very cool light, game. It's a very light card game. It has wonderful artwork. It's hilarious. Um, but Sprawl Ups is the first big game that mm -hmm. I made, and mm -hmm. it is – it's kind of phenomenal and kind of mind blowing to like watch a bunch of people play it. playing the game Especially and the... getting into it, and you're just like standing there, oh, yeah. and then people are like, "Why are you standing there? You're kind of creepy." Yeah. So you like, do this I too. Just... I did this to people with Heroes of the Atari Cluster. Whenever, <laughs> whenever, like, I'm at Gen Con and people are running other events, I just sidle up. I'm just like, "Okay, it's cool so, to play X Wing. That's awesome." So funny story. Uh, I was at the Catalyst booth where they had a demo of the game going. Oh and I'm just God. sitting there and I'm kind of like <laughs> this is you and I, yeah. really, really close and like leaning over people's shoulders, watching them play. And I'm listening to, to the person explain how to play. And they're, they're taking a couple of turns and I'm just kind of totally doing the lurking, like, like about that much right now. Like, yeah. Like yeah. Where, where the guy was kind of like this and Lauren, CEO of Catalyst, like, comes up and runs into me, like, <laughs> shoulders me to the point where I, like, almost, almost fall, on, fall the game. on the table. But, like, I catch my balance and, you know, me being He's me, about to start a fight. With some so of the things realize. I do, I, like, turn around and I've got the fist cocked already. And I'm like, I see it's Lauren. I'm like, okay. And, and then you hit him. You know, oh, no. and then Lauren's, like, sitting there talking to me for a little bit. And I overhear... Uh, the the woman running the demo, she's like, actually, I'm sorry about this, but I kind of have to kick you out because that's the CEO and he needs this table because like <laughs> Lauren's gesturing to the game and talking to me, but she obviously can't hear what's being said. And then Lauren being Lauren, he wanders off. And then all of the people who were playing the game had just left. And so <laughs> the demo agent's looking at me and she's like, so did you want to hear about this game? Like, I thought Lauren wanted to show you this. And you I was like, been like, yeah, sure. Tell I'm actually the designer. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that you chased everybody and we, and we all just looked around and we went, it's Lauren's fault. Yep. That was the conclusion. <laughs> I, I no, This is, I this is when we start with... the hall on Thursday. That's yeah. I was hanging out with North Foundry for a bit. Ago. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's our stories. Crazy fun times. Yeah. This has been a great uh, designer hour. It's an hour already. Thank that went, you, that went Russell. by. That was pretty <laughs> quick. Yeah. Thank you, Russell, for making that. And Stephen, yeah, hopefully we'll have a chance to play with you. We will be at Unplugged, and uh, we'll play. That'd be a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. People have also really been enjoying Super Camelot. That yeah. game is is going to be, I think, a little bit of a Why surprise. Why do you for say that like it's a surprise? Well, just it's just because game. just because it's it's, weird it's a little under the radar. It wasn't. That. It wasn't a huge campaign on Kickstarter, Fair. right? And um, it's not really in retail yet, and it hasn't had the kind of advertising and buzz that Sprawl Ops has had. Right, and I understand the whole, like, you know, totally, like, being surprised that people know about it and are coming about it, but the people who play it, it shouldn't be a surprise that they're enjoying No, it. but it's it's still pleasant to see. Like, I'm it's, still again, surprised it's, that Albion's legacy, after, like, four or five years, and people still come out yeah. and like, it's more of my favorite game of all time, or it's this, or it's... Every so often, there's one. Every so often, there's more than one this year. This year's, yeah. like, three or four. It's been a couple. There was a bunch that wanted to play it, and they came back, and Die ran a special game just for them. I'm not kidding when I said it's become a cult classic, and of all of the legacy games, I think that's the one we're going to keep running indefinitely. Yeah. That'll always be in our queue. Oh, Gascony's is kind of cool. Gascony's, Gascony's is, pretty is pretty darn cool. cool. And it's pretty I'm darn cool because he has gone and cleaned up a bunch of old garbage. <laughs> we played it. We played uh, it last night. Was it last night? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We and played you, it you last made one small with... tweak, and we were just like, "Wow!" Of course. That was like, "Oh Can you imagine what he could have done to Neverlands and Sherwoods if he had his touch? Well, it's almost like you know when Sprawl Ops was put in front of people, and they were like. Why don't you just do the action when you put a worker there and it's like <laughs> so you, you can never see the biggest flaw in your own game. <laughs> but that's, this is good. This is. is a good segue because we started this conversation. You came in with farts in the room because we had the door open. Yep. Yeah. And Josh yep. has been farting all night. So Thanks. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm not in this room and suddenly I'm a lot happier for that. <laughs> it wasn't Josh, it was Doc. Thumbs up if you're glad you're wow. not in this room. Bus? No, he's not even here to defend herself or her farts. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Careful, she'll throw stuffed avocado at you. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh. Jim, Jim was asking about it. I came up to him and I was like, Do you have like, one here? Yes. Oh, shit. Yes, of course. It's well, it's, a, it's one of their best sellers. You should borrow one. That and, and the like three headed. Her chair. 
fluffy ball Cerberus thing. He said that's their number. That does not surprise me at all. That that is the big Cerberus. Yeah. 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 For those those of you who don't know, one of Lauren's other business endeavors is a toy store chain called Wishes. So Catalyst's owner owns a bunch of toy stores, and they always come to these shows with these big booths of these very fuzzy stuffed plushies that are like they're very uh, Asian like in art style basically mm-hmm. so there's like an avocado with a smiley face for a pit it's like a half avocado that's the one oh, that i have so if you remember our streams from pax Thanks. it made an appearance and <laughs> so did all of that um but we we're just talking about the fact that like these guys move so many they sell out all the time yeah like, we no look, matter how we, many we looked at bring. each other at pax and we were like why are we selling board games we clearly <laughs> should be selling thousand dollars very cute so we're like lucky to make two thousand dollars in one board game yeah. And we're dogging it, and this guy's just sitting there trying to like take a break. And <laughs> Hammer was selling plushies. He sold they sold so many plushies, they even sold the shelves. <laughs> I was like, what the they sold the shelves <laughs> to some guy. I was like, oh, how about the shelves? <laughs> oh, why? Why? Because the plushies were sitting on it? Like, At least they don't have to bring the shelves up. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. the point. He, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, Yeah, yeah, man. I just sold the shelves. I'm like, oh my god, why don't you sell why don't you sell the carpet that you're renting too? Like I so for, the, for the tables and chairs the convention gave you. <laughs> the table skirt we sold for 50 bucks. Oh, <laughs> the guy can sell anything. Oh, God. He's real good. That's true. So we've uh, we've passed her hour. Um, you guys got like, about a minute to ask any more questions. You've asked a lot of really good ones tonight. This is the last time you can oh, see Oh, man, the Ryan, you are, you're here the entire time. Yeah, good on you, man. Like, you're, the, you're the bomb. Yeah. And uh, for, the, for the rest of you... Uh, have we ever thought about using a neoprene mat as a board? Yep. Funny you say that. Yeah, funny. I don't know why they think that's funny. Why is it funny? No clue. In other words, yes, it's coming. <laughs> and, uh, there, there is a game that uses a neoprene board. It's a dexterity game. Isn't it? The hockey game? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. What? Yeah, we got a hockey? game called Hat We had a game called Hat Flick. It's a flicking hockey game. You've never seen this. No, I this, never. this is a Gofton original. I made this one on my own. This, this one actually, yeah, all the cards are him in Photoshop. I actually did nothing on this game. Yeah, it needs it needs a Photoshop. So you're terrified. Stuff. No, I'm intrigued. Okay. It's a pretty good game. It is actually not a bad one. It's game. hockey, but you're flicking. You know what's gonna happen? You know if you flick happen? too hard, you know it's a penalty. Happen? You know what's gonna happen? What? I'm gonna go, I'm done with this. <laughs> good. Just don't flick too hard. <laughs> what do we yeah. got here? <laughs> what time? Where? Can we watch the stream tomorrow where you're going to be showing off all the Evil Dead 2? I'm wondering if there's a way I can stream it from my phone at the same time. No, it's stupid. Isn't it 5 to 6 tomorrow? Or? It's 5 o'clock tomorrow for half an hour oh, on the Board Game Geek live stream. They're running a live stream during the dealer's hall hours. They have a live stream going on all weekend long. We're really? just the four, was just the dealer's We're just hours. the 4.30, the, the, uh, uh, the, five, the 5 o'clock uh, slot. So, yeah. Come on out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus, we got to plug Dwarven Miner. <laughs> uh, hold on. Dwarven Miner is live. Must find Link. Yep. Five o'clock tomorrow. Where's Link? Evil Dead 2. No. Where's Link? Uh, Must find cool. Link. There it is. Dwarven Miner reforged. No, I don't want it as a back. All right, guys. I'm going to put this on in here, and you guys are going to take a look at it. Because if you want to back it, why isn't it kind of showing up? Hmm? Where's Link? Link's in Super Camelot. Oh, wait, sorry. No, it's not a Zelda game, really. <laughs> wait, what? Oh. Why, why does it say zero? That took me a minute. Why does it say zero? Why is are there no backers? Is that the actual one? Is that the 14 actual days one? To go. It's not live. It is live. Unless there's multiple ones. Just do a search. Did you do a search for Jordan Miner? No, let's do that then. Yeah, do a search because they probably did another one. They probably made a new page. Because it's freaking... Oh, yeah, because it's them. Oh, there it is. Uh... Yeah, okay. there yeah, we go. See? Needs a bit of needs a bit of a boast. This is a cool game. This is like the sort of thing that we would design if we made a light little dice game. It's great. All right, guys. This so is this is the, the got some cool art too. This is the board game where I learned and appreciated just how OCD Josh is about certain details. Oh yeah, because this the with the board and the yeah. So dwarven yeah, miner. Don't put forest. icons over the fold line. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. So so dwarven <laughs> miner. Uh, our friends over at uh, Rather Dashing Games, Mike Ritchie. Uh, this is his project. Uh, I'm helping him run the Kickstarter. I say that, and the prototype board for Angel has it across a line of text. 
Really? It does. It absolutely does. I have to, oh. move, I have, I have to move a whole location Hot on the board. Oh. Because, oh. Oh. <laughs> but the, uh... Look, I want to I say this for, for record here. The prototypes of Angel were playing at Origins. I laid out for print, printed and assembled in four hours yeah. the morning before we left to drive here. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> the fact that the gun's card being overrun on text and there being one location with text on the fold line being the only real issues with text and content on a fairly content-heavy game, pretty good. Very good. It's very good. The 0.1%. No, you did very easy. You killed it. You Absolutely killed it. much better uh, than I could do. So for Dorman Miner, if you get a chance to, you know, uh, obviously we'd love to see you support it somehow. But save your money for our games. No, mm -hmm. I'm kidding. We'd love to see you support it somehow. Uh, they're great guys. Uh, Dwarven Miner uh, developed some pretty integral product. And uh, this is with Larry Elmore's art on it. I sent the link there. And I believe Meeple's Champ uh, also put one up. Uh, you know, back it for a buck. Spread the word. Tell some people you think would like the game. Uh, back it yourself if you'd like. Yeah, they got Larry Elmore's art on there. It's going to be a gorgeous game. He, yeah. did, he did a really good job. And, and yeah. remember, the, 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 the thing about Kickstarter is, like, always remember the most important thing about Kickstarter is, which is, like, sure, if it's not your type of game or, sure, if, like, you know, you can't put the money in on it right now, totally makes sense, totally understandable. Mm -hmm. Spreading the word helps so much. Yeah, just posting it on your Facebook, letting people know. Yeah, mm. That kind of stuff is what makes the difference for these Kickstarters, and we really, 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 really support Mike Ritchie. We want this game to work for him. Um, mm -hmm. We want this game to work for like, him. He's, he's we kind of we awesome filmed guy. the gameplay video for it. Yes. And You'll see us we're describing it. We yeah. actually play it. We just, uh, well, we're, yeah, we explained we it. Play, we've played two rounds, but you get a chance mm -hmm. to see it. So if you want to hang out with us more, go check out that video. But yeah, we were pleasantly surprised. It was a great little game. Yeah, right. I mean, I knew it wasn't. Gonna, I wasn't going to be bad, but I was actually like, I like that game. Yeah, it's a neat game. I would play it. You'd be good at it because you're good at those like, those mathy Euro games. Kind of. Yeah. The biggest thing about the strategy of that game, from my limited experience playing, it seems to be maintaining what permutations you can cash in because you're rolling dice and using them to claim uh, resources. Yeah. And then spending combinations of resources to kind of invest in things on the board and then cashing in sets of those things. So managing your like combinations is where that. He's also pretty good at the, the push your luck dice game as seen last night. During oh my God. He kicked my ass last we night. have a traditional game. That has night. nothing to do with skill. He kicked my ass last night. So if you go to Linear nothing Studio. To do in my skill. game, kicked my ass last the, night. The only thing that was skill in that game was realizing <laughs> that I needed that blue, blue, green runner on turn one and buying it okay. with the face. That was totally it. kicked Who my ass called it? Who said to you, watch him. He's, He's going to win the game. He's sneaky. I'm not sneaky. So, <laughs> for those of you who you have me buy the, ups, you let me buy the good cards. Century. I played aggressively. I had no lucky. money. Century. Why? 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 Because right? injury, for those of injury, you who injury, played injury, Sprawl Ops, I failed four missions in a he, row. He had not completed a mission I yet when I did the final the mission first. with a triple veteran team. It was it's, stupid. It's, it's Meanwhile, true. at the other table... While watching the NBA get like its its face rocks by this the is the picture Raptors. on Facebook by the yeah, way we were playing this game he's are, he's smiling at me because it hasn't gone downhill for him yet in the game <laughs> Lynn Banner Studios Facebook page check it out uh, you can see a bunch of photos of us at the con and yeah. absolutely watching Josh wreck Dylan at his own game in Sprawl Ops with me in the background being like I told you so meanwhile we're out having an epic battle of Albion's legacy which was pretty epic actually it's still not as bad as the first game I developed the first game that first real game that I developed. I lost over 20 times before I ever won that game. It's okay. We lose at Alvin's <laughs> Legacy. If we design. I mean, d designing a game is in no way related to being good at playing said game. Absolutely, but it is a game with no luck element. At all. <laughs> so that should tell you there's no one obvious winning strategy. Yeah, that's Steve was true. saying you should have hired Reeves and Mayer, which is their characters. Yeah, and Leaf. We, we, could, we, we only have the retail party, edition, though. not the Kickstarter edition That's true. with the cool extras. I got those cards here. I got three. There packs are not of that those. many runners in the retail edition. I have three packs mm -hmm. of those. If you are at Origins and you want to pick up a Rose oh. Gallery pack, Ooh. I have three packs here. Ooh. A that reminds me. A they're, they're awesome. B somebody <laughs> else. Somebody else has already be uploaded on BGG okay. a file of how to replace all of the starting all of the starting runners in the base game mm. with the rogues gallery runners okay and be able to keep the distribution close to the same someone, nice. figured out. someone already went through God, did that and i love you gamers of, you just like, figured this here, stuff out replace these people and it's like wow okay awesome yeah. wow.
It was crazy. Not going to brag, but I'm undefeated in sprawl ops. Ooh, is that a challenge? That would be like me fighting him in a sword Not fight. something right? you should admit. <laughs> Are you going to go beat him up now? Are you going to go get John? I don't know. I'm kind of still licking my wounds right now. <laughs> <laughs> those, those dice hated you so hard. Oh, God. You, no, you think you could roll Again, anything other so, than three just wounds so and seven so 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 me and For says, people who have played the game, this isn't going to mean anything to you if you haven't played the game. I was on the last stage. I was on my last roll of the last stage, and I needed one black. That's it. How many dice are you rolling? Was like I eight, was rolling eight or nine. four blacks, two greens, <laughs> a red, and a blue, and I killed my runner who was upgraded and injured my street Sam, so I was down to two people. Hey, I think I'm the world champion of Evil Dead 2 right now. I haven't lost a game. This is accurate. How many have you played? Okay. <laughs> I've played three and I haven't lost. Of Suck Evil it. Dead 2? Yeah. yeah. I've played two and I'm one and one. So I'm not even. Right. Gonna undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> That's a game we're being good at, the game. Being the designer might actually give you some advantage because you know all the item combos. When That's you, a when you see the light. playthrough video, you're gonna love it because it's Josh and I versus Will and Die. Yeah, Di? yeah uh, Will. it's Missy. Will and Missy. Yeah, Will which was an Missy. unusual one at that time of yeah, night. We thought she was gonna be asleep. Unusual pair too. Yeah, uh, and but, they, they were playing but, really but well. But we, we took turns um, holding every time we got a corruption card. We showed it to the camera, but not to us. Yeah. So oh. we, so you guys will know watching that video. You guys will know who the nice. Deadites are before we yeah. know who the Deadites are. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have a game of Star Trek Alliance to run for some people who are at the con and requested it. And I have to go and maintain my drinking quota on the second floor of the Hyatt with all of my clients. And I have to run a <laughs> demo for the last game I signed before I joined Bender. Okay. Yeah. So we I have. Guess, I guess we're going to do that and then we're going to play. Ready to? Oh, come on. Wow. Oh, Josh. Wow. Josh always goes first. <laughs> wow. And he doesn't wait for everybody else. Come on, Josh. Finish. Get off your phone, Hollywood. I'm Three, two, one, go. Later, guys. <laughs> now you got to end the stream. You're supposed to do that. <laughs> See, now.